In this video we're going to look at setting up uh, a platformer game and then coding and controls and movement for uh, for the player in the platformer game so namely uh, moving left and right and jumping so I've started to set up a level here just a simple little level with some sprites and all these sprites here have a box collider on them that are marked uh, that aren't marked as triggers so just a straight box collider so they won't allow travel through them so uh, again I just set up all the platforms uh, inside of an empty game object that's been zeroed out and then we can just hold all of our ground pieces in here and then we can just close it like that to keep it nice and neat in our hierarchy um, so then we're going to add in our player so I've got a player here uh, and these sprites um, I've got off the asset store I will link in uh, where I got these from in the description so you can go and get these if you like as well so we've got the player in here and what I've done is I've added a rigid body to him because we're going to need gravity and uh, I turned the gravity scale up a bit we'll play with that some more later but right now if I hit play you will notice he's just going to fall right through the world okay because he also needs a collider so if you're setting up for a platformer game your your platforms and your ground needs colliders and then you're also on your player going to need a collider so I've added the capsule collider to him and I've sized it down so that the bottom of it uh, matches pretty close to the bottom of his feet and we're just covering the main part of his body here uh, and again we're not going to make these triggers we actually do want this to stop movement through uh, other colliders so that it, it blocks him from falling and uh, so we have our capsule collider here for him and I'm using a capsule collider because uh, if I use the box collider sometimes those sharp edges will hang up on things so I use the capsule collider for um, for this because it's a little smoother for moving so we've got a capsule collider on him here and now if I hit play you'll notice that he will stop on the ground so now he's sitting there not falling through anymore next we have to do a little scripting here to get his controls and movement set up so let's make a new script for him we're gonna create a new C sharp script we'll call this player platform movement and we'll open that up in mono develop alright here's our player platform movement script and this script is going to need to get input from the keyboard and then apply it to our player so what we're gonna need to do here again our update function is where we want to do all of our check for inputs so let's just make a temporary variable here, a float, to hold our input values from our input get axis. So this time we just want to get axis horizontal. So let's get some, some horizontal input here. So we'll set that equal to input get axis. And then we want the horizontal which is already mapped to our left and right arrows and our A and D key. All right, again, input get access returns us a number between a negative one and a positive one. Then with that input, we can move our character. So I'm gonna just move his transform. So I'm gonna say transform.translate. And I'm going to feed in a vector 3 here for movement so we only want to move on the x axis so we'll say horizontal and we'll take that times time dot delta time and then we'll take that times some sort of a movement speed so we gotta make a speed variable let's just drop that in up here at the top real quick we'll make a public so we can assign it in the inspector public float speed there okay so this will get us moving side to side with our player so let's save this and go out and apply it to the player and see what happens here and I forgot to fill in the rest of the vector 3 so remember we gotta say tell it 0 on the uh, Y and 0 on the Z there we go now we should be good to go back in here 
there. Okay, so when I click on my player, I want to give him the script. So let's grab that script and drop it on my player here. Let's give him a speed. Let's try something like a five. And let's hit play and see what happens here. All right, so you notice he's moving back and forth here just fine. Oh, but then he fell over. So there's a little bit of an issue here where he falls over and he can't get back up. It's kind of funny, uh, but it's not what we want. That's because using the capsule collider, um, it's round on the bottom. So if he hits a little rough edge somewhere, it's going to cause him uh, to tip over. So to fix that, in his rigid body, we can go to the constraints area. And we can tell it to freeze rotation on the Z. What this means is that um, it will take all the physics calculations out of the rigid body for Z rotation. So um, him hitting edges of things now will not change his Z rotation at all. He should always just stand straight up and down. So with that checked, let's test it again. And now he's moving back and forth and uh, he is not falling over. Okay, so he won't fall over anymore. All right, so we've got him moving backwards and forwards. Next, we have to get him jumping. So in our input manager, you'll notice that there's an input already set up called jump, and it's set for the space bar. So we're going to use this one. So we're going to get this input uh, that's mapped to the space bar and use that to trigger our jumping. Back in our script, then, we have to... Um, do a check to see if that button was pushed. Now, we're not going to treat this as an axis. We're not going to get a negative one to a positive one. We just want to know if the space bar was pressed. So that's uh, just going to be done inside of an if statement here because we're going to test every frame was the space bar test uh, uh, pushed. And how we do that is saying if input dot get button down. Oops, I got to find the right one here. Get button down. So, uh, get button down will return a true to us the very first frame that that button was pushed. And the button that I want is uh, jump. So again, we use the name exactly as it appears in the input manager. This is mapped to the space bar. So if I push the space bar, that very first frame, it will trigger whatever code I put in here below. All right. So when I jump, what I'm going to want to do is apply some force to the rigid body. Because again, we're going to use the rigid body for the vertical movement here for jumping and falling, so we can use gravity. So I want to apply a force to the rigid body on the y-axis, which will cause him to jump up into the air. So that means I'm going to need a reference to his rigid body before I can do that. So let's make a public rigid body 2D variable here. And we'll just call this RB for rigid body. We'll save this. Let's go out into Unity and click on the player and link that in. So here's his rigid body. Again, I can just grab the rigid body component from here and drag and drop it down here. Right? So now that's a link to his very own rigid body. And we'll go back into our script now. And now that we have that link, when we jump, what I want to do is I want to say RB, so rigid body, I want to add force. Okay, and I'm going to add some relative force here. And I'm going to add it to his Y axis. All right, so that means on the X, because this is a vector 2, I'm going to have to tell it new vector 2. So i got to build a new vector 2 here. And on the X, I want zero force being added. So we'll put a zero there. But on the Y, I want a bunch of force, all right? And we're not quite sure how much force we want that uh, to have. So let's make a variable here called jump force. And that'll be a float variable that we will assign up here. So let's make a public float. We'll call it jump force. And then we got to add our other parentheses here to make that happy. Okay, so we've got our public float jump force, and when I hit the jump button, I'm going to go ahead and add a force on his y-axis to overcome gravity. So we'll save that. Let's go back out here in Unity, and then we'll have jump force show up. So we're going to need a fair amount of force here, and sometimes this is trial and error. I'm going to try 500 for right now and just see how high that makes him jump. 
So when we hit play now, and I hit the space bar, he jumps. So that's what 500 does. It just does a little bit. It's not enough to get him up on the platform. So we'll have to try something bigger. So, all right, so we'll try a value of 700 here. And let's see what happens with that. Okay, so 700 looks a little bit better. I'm able to get up onto my platforms and I'm able to reach between them. So that might be a good value for us. All right, now we have one problem in that I can now actually double jump. So every time I hit the space bar, I'm adding that force. So uh, that could be an interesting amount of gameplay if you're trying to keep you know, something from falling and you have to keep adding force to it by pressing a key. But that's not what we want to do in our game here. So let's take uh, a look at one real simple way that we can uh, limit ourselves to single jumping instead of double jumping in our script here. So right now we're just saying if anytime I get the, the jump button, the space bar, add this force. So instead of just asking this, we actually want to find out if we are currently already jumping or if we're falling for that matter. So that means that if we check to see if we have any movement on the y-axis, uh, then we'll know that we're already moving up or moving down on the y-axis. So let's add an, an and here to this if statement. So if we get the jump button and I'm going to go to the rigid body and I'm going to check its velocity. Velocity, as you can see, is a vector 2. So I want the y velocity and this is going to give me a float that gives me how fast I'm moving on the y-axis, how fast that rigid body is moving on the y-axis. So I can say if my velocity on the y is um, greater than, we'll pick a small number like a 0.01 then I know that I'm currently moving up the screen. So I'm currently in the upward part of my jump. Now I also need to check to make sure I'm not falling because it could be that I've reached the top of my jump and I'm falling back to the earth. So we're also going to check for a negative velocity as well. So we'll say and our velocity, oops, that did not come out right, and rb dot velocity uh, dot y is not uh, less than so um, so if it's if it's uh, great if it's a actually I got this backwards don't I I want to ask if it's less than this so that I'm not moving up and then I want to ask here if it's greater than a negative 0 0.01 so that means it's got to be between a negative 0 0.01 and a positive 0 0.01 for this to work which means that for all practical purposes, we are not moving up or down at all. So uh, let's save this. So now when I hit, I'm, first I'm going to get the button. When I get the button, I'm not automatically going to jump. I'm also going to check to see, am I, am I moving on the y-axis less than a positive 0 0.01? And am I moving on the y-axis uh, bigger than a negative 0 0.01? So if I'm between those two numbers, I should be able to jump. So let's test this out out here in Unity. All right, so I'm, I can still jump, but now I can't double jump. I'm pushing my space bar repeatedly when I'm in the air. I did get one hit there because I must have hit it just at that magic moment when it was at the top of its jump. Um, and I forgot to reset my jump force here to 700 so that I can jump a little higher. But it's very unlikely that I'm going to get a double jump now uh, because of this. Now there are several ways to uh, control double jumping and to see if you're on the ground or not. This is just a very simple way uh, that works in most cases. We can get a little more complicated with it uh, if you need to for certain game mechanics, but this works just fine. All right, so now to control your jump and how it feels, couple things you can play with. If you play with your gravity scale, normally gravity scale is one. If you do a one though, um, it makes him feel pretty floaty. He falls down to the ground pretty slow. Um, so I find that turning the gravity scale up to a two or a three tends to give us a little bit more aggressive gravity. So when he jumps, he falls a little faster at the end. He doesn't float up in the air as long. So you can play with that. You can also, of course, play with your jump force, combination of jump force and, um, and gravity scale, 
will get you the kind of feel for your jumps that you want. So if you want it to be jumping on the moon and real floaty and it takes a long time to fall back down, then turn your gravity down. If you want them uh, to uh, fall down even faster, turn the gravity scale up a little bit more and then turn your jump force up a bit more so you can overcome the gravity. So those are kind of the things that you play with. All right, so there you go. That's how you can set up your uh, platformer style level, put your colliders on, and write some simple code here for your movement controls, getting your input for horizontal, getting your input for the jump, and then moving them back and forth and jumping. Hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please talk to me or leave a comment below. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.